Hey everyone, what's up? It's Rob Dotson. Today on Polycast, I'm gonna show you a very important trick, how to inherit from native HTML elements. Not only will this save you a ton of accessibility headaches, but it's also crucial if you wanna work with forms or tables. So let's dive in. So inheriting from a native element is really not that different from creating a brand new tag. You've still got the Polymer constructor that you're calling. The difference is you pass in an extends property and you pass in the tag name that you're inheriting from. And to use your new element in markup, it's really straightforward. You use the original tag name, you get an is attribute, and you pass in the extending tag name that you've created. So button is super button. If you want to do this in JavaScript, you call document create element, pass in the original tag name and the extending tag name. Now, creating an element in this fashion is known as a type extension element. And as I said before, they've got a few very nice benefits. So let's say you're working with a table and you've got this fancy TD element that you've created inside of here, what's going to happen is as the parser is working its way down the page, it's going to hit this thing and it's actually going to hoist it outside of the table. Because certain elements like table and UL and OL, if there are contents inside of them that the parser is not expecting, either it's not going to render them or it's going to do this thing where it hoists them out. And that is probably not what you're intending. It's going to render in sort of a weird way. So we can fix this. Instead of creating a custom tag name, we can extend the native TD element and create a fancy TD that way, and we're all good. Another use case for type extension elements is forms. So forms normally try to package up all the values from all the input elements that are inside of them. But if you throw a guy like this into a form, it's going to be like, I have no idea what this tag is. I don't know if it has values. I'm just going to ignore it when I submit my, my payload to the server. So again, we can fix this by extending the native input element. So input is fancy input. This is going to get all of its values sent to the server. So we're all good there. The other cool benefit is if you look at the native input element and you press the tab key on your keyboard, normally what you'll see is a focus ring go around it. Now, this focus state is very crucial for users of assistive technology. There are a lot of folks out there who cannot use a mouse to interact with the screen. They rely on keyboard navigation to get around. And for them, these focus states are very, very, very important. If you're extending the native input element with a type extension element, you're going to get this focus behavior for free. Otherwise, if you just created your own tag, then you need to add your own tab index, you need to add your own roles, you need to add your own ARIA attributes. There's a lot more accessibility work that you have to do when you're not extending native elements, because then you kind of just get it for free. So let's take a stab at implementing our own type extension element, and that'll really highlight some of these benefits. So to start off, what I'm going to do is create a Bower JSON file. I've got an element that I'm creating called GH button. It's going to look like the buttons that you see on the GitHub website. I'm depending on Polymer, and I'm depending on the 08 release here. Over in my terminal, I'm going to run Bower install to pull down that dependency. Because Polymer implicitly depends on Web Components JS, I'm going to get that for free as well, which is really nice. And the last thing I'm going to do is run the polyserve command. Now, polyserve, if you recall from our last episode, is a little server which allows us to write our elements using canonical path URLs. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about right now, uh, you can follow this link right here to catch the previous episode, and that will explain everything that we're doing here. Now, over in my GH button HTML file, I'm going to start by importing Polymer HTML, and I'm going to use the canonical path style to do that. Then I'm going to have a DOM module with an ID of GH button. And inside, I'll throw in a template and a content element. And lastly, in my script, I will call the Polymer constructor, pass in GH button, and I'm going to pass in extends button. So we've now created a type extension element of the native button tag. Now, over in my demo HTML file, I'm going to start by importing Web Components Lite JS. Then I'm going to include an import for GH button HTML. Uh, lastly, down in my body, I'm going to use the button element. I'm going to say it is a GH button. And then I'll just throw some hello world text inside of it. Now, if I go over to my browser to preview this, I'm going to get this little button element up here in the corner. You can see that when I click on it, I get the behavior I expect. If I tab to it, I get focus rings around it. Most importantly, when I flip on my screen reader, I can actually navigate down to it, and you'll see that the screen reader is going to read the content of the button, and 
it's going to announce that it is a button. It's actually announcing this implicit role here. Now that is very, very useful. So the last thing I'm going to do to spice this button up is I'm going to drop in a style element. And I've got a bunch of CSS that I've included here. I've just taken this from GitHub's CSS file. Uh, so you don't have to worry about what all these selectors are. One thing to note is that I'm using the host selector to style the element itself. And I've also gone in here and using GitHub CSS, specified focus states, hover states, active states, so you can see how you can apply these sort of pseudo states to your element. It's very important that you do this for accessibility. Now, hopping back into Chrome, when I refresh the page, you'll see that I've got a way nicer looking button. I click on it, I get the same behavior as before. I can hit Tab to put a focus ring around it. And most importantly, I can flip on my screen reader navigate to this button. I'll see the text content gets read aloud, and I still get that awesome implicit button state. Now, the obvious question is, when should I use a type extension element, and when should I create a custom tag? My rule of thumb is to try to extend from a native element whenever possible, especially if accessibility is playing a role in things. So if I'm building a control or a button, something that might require focus, I'm going to try to extend from a native element if that's possible. That's it for today. Be sure to subscribe and stick around for this week's featured question. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, Q&A time, folks. Uh, Edward Weitzerich and Justin Merz ask, are there any plans to support ES6 modules in Polymer? Which is a great question, guys. Currently, the plan is to support ES6 modules when they ship in the browsers. Right now, if you want to use ES6 modules, you got to use some kind of build step or a library like that. We want to avoid having to force people to use a build step just to use Polymer. So the plan at the moment is once that stuff ships in the browsers, we absolutely 100% want to support it. Thank you so much for the question. I'm going to have my minions contact you guys on G+. And if you out there want to get some swag of your own, leave us a question down in the comments. Maybe we'll feature on a future episode. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.